Today I'm going to be talking about how to tackle the PSA and all of the resources you will need to do in able for you to score at least 77% and above like I did. What is the PSA? Now the PSA is the Prescribing Safety Assessment. It's an exam that's carried out at all medical schools across the country and can also be taken during the Foundation Year 1 program in case you don't pass during your final year. The reason why we have this exam is as Foundation Year doctors you'll be doing a lot of prescribing, prescription errors, you know they're very high at this early stage and they want to minimize those and increase the safety for the patient. In terms of resources that you need to be aware of that are must-haves are physical BNF, digital BNF and the Medicines Complete website. Apart from the sites you need to know about the official PSA website and the assessments that they have on there one of the key books that you need to be aware about is past the PSA book which nearly everybody uses and it's a base to starting off the PSA journey and then a couple of extras that you need to be aware about are past medicine and the top 100 drugs in clinical pharmacology and practical prescribing I'll be covering those in more depth later on now in terms of the structure of the exam there's eight sections that you need to be aware of first one is the prescribing section which you be prescribing drugs and then in the prescription review section Section, you're looking at prescription that's already there removing drugs that are there that are either contraindicated or there's too much of one drug that's over the limit that they should be taking there's also manage section 3 which is management planning somebody you already know the condition of and you're looking at the management are you going to add things or take away things section 4 is the providing information section section 5 is the calculation skill section section 6 is the adverse drug reaction section section 7 is a drug monitoring section and the final section the data interpretation section now first of all the BNF. It's important for you to have access to the physical BNF so you know how to navigate it efficiently. Under exam pressures, the last thing you want to do is trying to learn how to navigate this in a time pressure base as that's not going to be very useful. You're going to spend a lot of time trying to find a drug that's quite mm -hmm. simple. So make sure you've had a look at the physical BNF beforehand. There's some key pages in the physical BNF that you need to be aware of with key conversion information and just generic side effects for certain classes of drugs. Personally, my favorite was the digital BNF on the website. I use that a lot. You can use certain controls to find specific keywords instead of reading through the whole thing it takes you to those sections but the negative thing about the digital BNF certain phrases need to be worded in a slightly different ways for you to find them using the digital BNF when you're practicing your questions will actually allow you to know what to search for for specific drugs and specific things the more practice you do the easier it is to use these resources key pages if I had to pick three that you need to read in the BNF and know about and have some idea about one is palliative care second of all will be poisoning and emergency treatment third of all fluids and electrolyte. Moving on to pass the PSA book. This is a book that nearly everybody uses. It's a book that you want to use earlier on in your journey. You want to use this book to get you to understand all of the different sections in the PSA as it starts off with a few sample questions to see how you perform in that section already. After that there's some notes that you can learn and the information relevant to those sections. You don't have to make notes if you don't want to. You can just use the pass the PSA book. Now after that there's some questions to test you on the knowledge you've just learned. Other positives about this book is it's easy to read. It's easy to understand also some mock exams at the end negatives about this book is the questions in the book are quite easy compared to the actual exam so you will need to do supplementary questions the PSA official website is a good place where you can do those supplementary questions it has around six mock exams you need to start practicing these mock exams right at the start of your revision I would say five weeks preparing for the PSA is more than enough you want to start doing these mock exams right at the start and space them out in the first four weeks and the last week you want to double up these exams so you can simulate a full exam and practice those every other day and make sure you're meeting the time target these exams some of them are really really hard and it'll be hard for you to meet the pass mark it's not about your score it's about what you learn for every question you get wrong and those you get right make sure you review all of those there's some test papers that are a little bit easier than others and maybe a bit easier than the exam but overall make sure you practice these it's a good resource for you to get familiar for the exam and also with how the exam will look and feel make sure you use the calculator provided on the website and also the links to the BNF and medicines complete so you can simulate what the exam will be like for real. You might be allowed to use a physical calculator but we weren't due to COVID restrictions so always keep that in mind and also if you have a physical BNF while you're doing these official practice tests make sure you use it but also keep in mind you might not be allowed to use that again due to COVID restrictions like we were. Moving on to extra resources so the past medicine website is a good extra resource to look into especially if you've got exams coming up at the end. SBA type questions it's got a good section for that and if you're also sitting 
in the SJT, he has some questions for that. Good key thing that I found about the PSA section is the adverse drug reactions questions are very good. It allowed me to memorize the key adverse drug reactions for the top drugs that keep coming up over and over again. The adverse drug reaction, you can actually get away without looking into the BNF if you know what the adverse drug reactions are for that particular drug and it will make the whole process quicker and more efficient. Remember, it's a time pressured exam. You don't have a lot of time. By the time you get into these later sections, your time is running out. So memorizing as much as you can is useful and go for it. But you know, if you can't, you can always find it at the BNF. That last extra resource that I recommend is the top 100 drugs in clinical pharmacology and practical prescribing. This is the book that will get you to understand and know about the top 100 drugs that you're most likely to encounter and come across. So it starts off with the cardiovascular system, the spiritual system, GI system and so on and so on and with these it starts off with a family of drugs so for example beta blockers then moves on to calcium channel blockers and so on. When you're looking at each family of drugs it's going to look at the indication of taking the drug why you're meant to be taking it. We'll also have a look at the brief mechanism of action as for me if I know how the drug works it helps me remember the drug as well. It then covers important adverse effects and side effects of that drug as a general family and also specific ones within that family. After that, it will also look at how you're meant to prescribe this drug. It will also look into communication, the kind of things you have to say to a patient when you're given the drug. And then lastly, it will look at costs and how much it costs the NHS to actually buy this drug. As you can see, this book already tackles and it hits a few of the other sections in the PSA, which is gonna be very useful. And that's why I think going through this book is very good. At the end of this book, there are a couple of questions to test your knowledge. The negative about this book is it's quite long. So you wanna start off, especially if you've got five we start from day one and pace yourself throughout and learn all these drugs throughout the whole thing if you've got a bit more time and you want to start earlier i would probably start reading it casually a couple months before and maybe revisit it if you want to maximize from this book other key tips that i learned aside from these are i use my pharmacology notes throughout medical school to supplement my learning from the past the psa book you also want to take this exam quite seriously you don't want to do this exam as a joke you want to really give it the respect it deserves like you do with the other medical school exams giving it respect and really revising for it properly will make Make the exam a lot easier and you have an easier time and be able to pass the exam very well as well. I also wanted to go through some of the key things that I learned through my preparation process and my notes and I thought that would be quite a long-winded process but instead I'm going to provide a link to all of the notes that I made for the PSA exam below that you can download and read in your own time. This is going to be free as I want to help you to do the best that you can in your PSA exam. But remember these notes are not essential, this is just extra stuff that I've just done. So these notes are combining what I learned from the past the PSA book teaching that I had in hospital and some of the key concepts I came across or areas that I was struggling in and I've compiled this document and I reviewed this document before my PSA exam. I also used it when I was doing my ATE assessment to learn key drug doses and a couple of side effects that are key to know and you know hopefully this helps you in your PSA exam. If you have any questions about the PSA that you want to know or you want answering don't hesitate drop them down below and I wish you all the best in your exam.